this centrifuge goes up to, with a pilot inside, 50 up to 9 Gs, uh, 9 times force of gravity. And we do that because of our requirements of our, of our, of our air crew, the various platforms. Uh, that will give you about a turn rate of 32 RPMs, I think, if I'm not, if I'm not wrong. We'll try to spin and maybe you can count if you all want to. Okay? Um, the improvement of this uh, piece of equipment versus the old piece of equipment that we had, this was the centrifuge, is that uh, in the past it was purely just about Gs. They go in, they do what the guy in the uh, video uh, did, they pull the G, they express the G, they let go. This new upgrade centrifuge can actually allow us to have what we call a DFS mode, a dynamic flight simulator mode, whereby the trainee can actually fly as he would be flying in an aircraft. So all the buttons, all the MFDs, everything in there are functional, as it would be in its own aircraft flying in the air. The only difference between this and the simulator is that he can, he can train to control his Gs, deal with the Gs as well as dealing with whatever he's uh, flying in the so that's the, that's the improvement that we have uh, for this piece of equipment. Okay, so this is, this is actually just a baseline. Okay, uh, the pilot in there will think he's at 1G. Okay. okay, are you ready? Okay, get closer, 9Gs. So this is what our pilot in the video was actually experiencing when he, uh, we saw him doing his 9Gs with the mask on. It's 9Gs, 9Gs. Nine, 9 times the force of gravity. I think we will pilot. Now, no. <laughs> but we do have pilots that go to 9G Okay, so that was the human, the HTC or the human training centrifuge. So every three years they come. Qualify, yes. Okay, we say qualify in the sense that we want, as we mentioned earlier, we want our pilots to be safe in their aircraft. Right? And we're not going to risk them going to uh, fight the F-15 or F-16, not knowing that they can tolerate 9Gs. So this is the EST or the ejection seat trainer. Uh, very stylized vector from the front of the look alike type. Um, this is another trainer in our APT. This trainer trains our pilot trainees, our operational pilots, the proper posture to have if they ever have to eject. Right? Um, we hope, we pray, we don't want anybody to eject because something must have gone really, really wrong in the aircraft if our pilot had to pull the ejection handle. Right, so we hope it never happens. But in the event that they do, right, we want to ensure that the most, the, the best protection, the best preparation we can give to our pilots to make sure that they have the minimum amount of injuries due to injection. Right? Um, this trainer will eject up to four Gs. That's the max we put for safety. Okay. In an actual aircraft ejection, it's about three times, four times that. Uh, that, that amount of G's for an ejection to occur. Okay, so this just a simu this just simulates it uh, for safety sake. How this works, you, um, leveraging your technology, there are sensors placed on the head, on the shoulders, on the legs, to make sure that everything needs to be in the proper position, all lights are green before we actually fire off, or before the seat can actually fire off uh, by the training. Okay, today we will actually demonstrate a dry run, whereby we're just going to use this uh, and it's not great to fire off. Let you see what it's like for an for an EST. Now. <laughs> this four Gs. Okay, this four Gs. Um, reason why we don't simulate the actual Gs itself of an actual ejection is because there's a lot of forces, a lot of threat to spine, to neck injuries if you actually move that high G. So we on the way to four Gs, so that the posture is correct. This is the hypobaric chamber. Right? The hypobaric chamber uh, for our trainees, what happens inside here is that we bring our trainees to altitude. Right? Depending on what profiles they run, we bring them up to up to 25,000 feet. Okay? And then when we are there, we expose them to the hypoxic experience whereby we actually remove the mask, remove the oxygen, and get them to do psychomotor tasks to show them what happens, how your performance degrades when you're hypoxic. Okay, hypoxic means you have not enough oxygen, not sufficient oxygen going to your brain. Never do experience hypoxia in the air. They know that they put on oxygen, uh, turn on to emergency oxygen, and then call the uh, make a call, and then get back to, to 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 land safely. That's the reason why we have this training here. The weather effect right now is a bright shower now, right? If you want, I can always change to a snow environment. All right, you're flying in a cold country. All right, you're very brave to find this sort of weather. 
All right, if you can change the cloud type, you know, become darker. Oh, it's cloud type. Yeah, all right. You can see that the motion is starting up already. Haven't started, don't worry. All right, if your pilot is flying visually, you just follow what is the line coming down. This is what you think is straight level. All right, but if I look at the instrument, if I correct for it, this will be the straight level attitude. All right. Okay, for the outside, you'll feel that something is not right. Okay, this is called the cross horizon. It's important that sometimes they fly visually, they also need to use the instrument to double check. Alright? Because sometimes like, it's quite dangerous, they are not aware of such things that happen. Alright? So just always trust the instrument, right? Yeah, you have to trust the instrument because your vertical sensors will tell you all kind of presentation. Alright, now I'm going to make it clear. I'm going to pull up, do a look down. Okay, welcome to the uh, instructor operating station for the F-16 OFT. Um, as you can see here, it's basically a one-stop shop for the instructor to sit here and monitor and basically control everything that the student uh, that's sitting inside the uh, F-16 OFT uh, gets to see and do. Um, if you look behind you, behind the glass window, there's actually a dome and that's where the student is uh, and the, um, the pilots actually sit in there for the training. The instructor sits up here and he has full communications with the, uh, with the operational pilot sitting downstairs in the dome in terms of um, controlling and uh, basically giving him all the scenarios he needs for his training.